stories on this, just fascinating with all the insight. What are the most important things that fans need to know about this proposal and the likelihood that it becomes the new law? Well, Mike, first, I think the question of timing is what everybody wants to know. When will this happen? And the answer to that is that it's possible it could happen before the 12-year contract expires in the 2025-2026 season. It is not going to happen this year or next season. But in order for it to happen before the contract expires, everyone involved in it has to agree upon it. It's certainly possible. I think another thing fans need to know is why they like 12 over 8. And the reason is because they believe it grants more access, but also preserves the integrity of the regular season and enhances it, and also makes conference championship games more valuable. There was some concern that they were getting away from that. And Bob Bowlesby, the Big 12 commissioner, said yesterday that under this scenario, the practicality of it is that in October and November, there are going to be 25 to 30 teams we're talking about in consideration for this, as opposed to the handful that there are in the four-team system. That's right. And so it's sort of flipping the old adage that it, it, it dilutes the significance of the regular season. It actually makes more games important rather than fewer games. All right, Paul Feinbaum, I come to you. Again, no one follows this stuff more closely than you do. To you, what is the most important thing fans need to be thinking about as we look at this proposal? Fans have a bigger investment in, in the playoff now, Greeny, and, and what Heather said is so interesting. Uh, we would begin the season after Labor Day by you asking people like uh, Heather and myself questions like, who, who are the top four? You can't do that anymore. Uh, there are just too many schools to consider. I think this is one of the most important and exciting moments in the history of this game, and it has to happen sooner rather than later. You can't say uh, in a couple of weeks we're going to do this in 25 or 26. It has to happen the season after next. And if it does, I, I think the, the sport of college football can be saved. Greeny, the sport was losing audience. It was losing interest. And give the people that run the sport credit. They recognized that. They, they, they quit trying to obfuscate and say everything was copacetic when it wasn't. And this is so significant. It's so exciting. And I just may stick around a couple of years and cover it. <laughs> well, we're not letting you go anywhere. Heather, the, the Notre Dame <laughs> angle in all of this is fascinating to me. Explain to people who haven't read your story how Notre Dame is impacted by this. Because Notre Dame is an independent, and it's not just Notre Dame, it's all independents, they cannot earn a buy in the first round. Even if they are number one in the country and undefeated, the highest seed that they could get is number five because those first four seeds go to the highest ranked conference champions in this model. Jack Swarbrick, Notre Dame's athletic director, is okay with this. He has to be. He was on the working group that put this together. But it's important for people to realize also Notre Dame could benefit from this. Why? Because they get a break from not playing a conference championship game. And they also, when the, when the playoff starts, in that first round, you're playing at home. Okay, so there's the good and the bad. Paul Feinbaum, how about the Notre Dame of it all? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I, I, I've ever made the following statement. This is really not fair to Notre Dame. I mean, if you go back in the history of college sports, Notre Dame has literally stolen national championships because they are Notre Dame, and there's been so much schadenfreude around the country, but no more. Uh, Greeny, they, they, they do have some advantages, as Heather said, but I, I think it's time for Jack Swarbrick and the, and, and, and the people that run Notre Dame to get with the program. And the program is they need to be in a conference. Last year, they had the one-off. They, they joined the ACC on a temporary basis. Remember, they, they belong to the ACC and everything but, but hockey and football. I think it's better for Notre Dame to be in a conference because there, there's just too many obstacles. Playing at home is great, but that, there's still a lot of risk involved. And two seasons from now, Green, you think about this. Notre Dame plays Clemson and Ohio State. They could be undefeated having beaten two of the top four teams in the country, and they still have to play a game to get in. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.